Hello YouTube, this is Bowtie Media, and today we've got another installment of Hot Takes where I look at some of your hot takes and we'll talk about and sort of uh, respond to the best in this video. I'm super excited, I haven't really read any of these, so let's hop into it. An overwhelming majority of artist focus groups and subreddits resemble echo chambers because they no longer allow or permit such criticism that deviates from the norm, where one, it is always only praise that is expressed towards a particular set of things, or two, any and everything that an artist creates is seen as gold. That's an interesting comment because I, I like I get it. I, I understand. I don't know if it's like the most healthy thing in the world, but I understand it. Like if my subreddit, the, the Bote Media subreddit, which you can join the link below, just became people that were like upset with everything I did and didn't like all my videos. Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that. I don't want that. So you kind of want that, those, those communities for a specific artist to be that kind of safe place. You want it to be. There needs to be a healthy amount of criticism though that, um, yeah, I don't know. It just depends. I, I, I'm honestly personally not involved in a ton of artist focused subreddits. And so I'm not sure what it is. I can see how easily it is though that people very intentionally would want to say only the best things about every new release or everything the artist has done just to gain the attention of the artist. Um, I find, especially in EDM, there's a lot of people that really want to, um, to, to, to have recognition from the artists. And it, and it's so much nicer too. Like, I don't know, like I was talking with Coven lately and it's been really nice just chatting with them and then having like Ellis follow me on Instagram. Like I get that dopamine hit. I'm like, oh, I'm excited that they're there. So like, I get it. I understand there does need to be some healthy way to do it and to receive criticism. And I think that's just based per artist, I would say. But generally, and you said overwhelming majority, I haven't had the personal experience. So I don't personally know. I would love to hear what you guys say in the comments about this. It seems like EDM is dying, at least on YouTube. All the channels that were blowing up in 2015, 2017 are getting way less views nowadays. Proximity, Monster Cat, Trap Nation, Drop City, Suicide Sheep. Uh, what is that? Is it just because music is moving more towards just Spotify, SoundCloud, etc.? Uh, only The only channel that seems to get a lot of views is NCS. They are still going strong. Um, YouTube is just dying for music and everywhere is other than Spotify and Apple Music. That's just the, the reality of music nowadays. Everyone's listening to it on streaming platforms. And I know YouTube is YouTube music and there's like Amazon music and all that kind of stuff, but it's it's all run by Spotify and Apple Music right now. And I would say like 75% of that, maybe even 80% is Spotify. Um, it's just the ease of the platform is everything about it. I think it just makes it a much better experience for the user. And so, yeah, the reason NCS seems like it's going strong on YouTube still or going strong in general is just because that's kind of their bread and butter. That is their niche of being specifically not copyrighted songs. So people are going to them on YouTube to see if they like the song or then linking the song in their description after they use it for an outro. So NCS is like the, is the YouTube label sort of that, <laughs> that everyone wants to go use because of people that don't even like EDM go to NCS because it's just the not copyright music. And a lot of people look at NCS just for background music or hype music rather than being an actual music label, something that they would listen to intentionally. If you like someone's music but don't want to support them because of controversy, I feel like pirating that artist's music is completely justifiable. That is very interesting take. Very interesting take. Huh. That's, that's, yeah, that's weird. I, I don't want to say that. I, I'm just even thinking who even pirates nowadays, like listening to a song on Spotify is going to get that person like so very, very few cents. It's like, what? I don't even know what it is. Is it 20 cents per like thousand view or thousand listen on Spotify? I have no idea what it actually is, but I feel like <laughs> you're basically giving them pennies for just listening on Spotify or Apple music as well. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's quite the take. Um, I don't know. I just, I feel like the intent to really be listening to an artist continually after something that they've done wrong or you believe them to be doing wrong, it would seem weird to me that you would be like, hey, this person sucks. They did a really bad thing, but I want to keep listening to their music like very intentionally. That feels weird to me. I, I think maybe just personally, like I get it. I, I would say if a song comes on of a person that did something bad, I wouldn't like turn it off, particularly be like, oh, okay, like, yes, this is the song, but I wouldn't intentionally be like, oh, I'm going to go look up this song and I'm going to go even like pirate or download this. That just, I don't know. The intent feels, the intent doesn't feel like it matches there. I feel like within the next three or so years, we'll see another big spike in popularity in EDM, like in the early 2010s. This time around, it actually lasts and doesn't fizzle out like the last wave. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's happening. I don't think it's happening with the way that commercial music is going so far and being 
so much more bland and derivative. I just don't think that's happening. As well as, I don't think this last one really fizzled out. I think so much of EDM sounds and culture is ingrained in popular music nowadays that like a lot of pop is EDM. It seems like of anything, pop and rap, both or hip hop and, and EDM, uh, both kind of took over pop music. I would say there still obviously is your poppy stuff, but you see so much of like, even in the early 2010s, you just saw like a rapper tacked on the end of a Justin Bieber song or a Katy Perry song or something like that. And then um, even Beyonce doing some rap with Jay-Z in some random areas. And all, also it all has an EDM beat to the back of it now. So just, I don't know. I I, I just think EDM is, is way bigger than you think it is. No, just because there's not lots of EDM songs. I think there's lots of EDM sounds in the pop industry. And uh, I don't think there's going to be another wave because I think it's already so engrossed in the culture. The dubstep diversity is ironically starting to converge again. A lot of color base sounds similar, as does future bass, melodic bass, and rhythm. Yeah, you know, I can kind of agree with this. I would say I, yeah, I found color base is an interesting example, especially because it's such a niche of a niche of a niche of a genre that uh, you can't really explore it a ton. There isn't really a lot to really do that makes it sound unique once you've kind of heard like maybe, I don't know, 100, 200 songs. It's kind of all the same at that point. Um, and that, that's not a blanket statement that I just, I think generally for most niche of niche, niche of genres or made up genres. I mean, all, made, all genres are made up, but yeah, I, I can, I can feel this for dubstep. I think specifically melodic, ba melodic dubstep, which you didn't really talk about here. Um, rhythm too. I just, I don't personally get rhythm at all. And you guys know that about me, but, um, yeah, I, I would say so. I'm, I'm waiting for another revitalization of just genres of just sounds to become more unique again. And to, um, I don't know, do stuff like, uh, more Kismet is a great example of just producing stuff that just sounds so creative in a genre that feels a little bit more dreary nowadays, like this kind of bass sound, like, they kind of do everything of like future bass and melodic bass and color bass and like dubstep. It's all over the place, but sounds so unique and creative, especially in 2022. So I'm waiting for more like more kismet. And speaking of dubstep, emotional melodic dubstep is currently the worst and least creative genre out there. Copy paste drops in every song and the attempts at making a heavy second drop just makes songs even more boring. I agree, Poisoned. Melodic dubstep is the freaking worst genre right now. It is so derivative. It is so boring. It is copy pasted from everything just in the, in the way that vocalists are added as features and just other, they always have a, a nice female vocalist and then a like heavy hitting other producer that is tacked on well. And at the end it's just, I, ugh, I just, I need melodic dubstep to change. I need it. I need it to be different. But that is this episode of Hot Takes. Let me know what you guys think about these takes in the comment section below. And other than that, I've been Botet Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.